Good morning, everyone. I'm Rosie Chu, and welcome to On the Square. Today we have a lot for you to learn, and one of the things that we'll be learning is about an international language called Esperanto. We'll also be finding out about a radiothon telethon that's happening that's going to be supporting one of our uh, community groups, and we'll tell you where to tune into that in a little while. Also, we'll be finding out about male potency uh, through a new clinic that just opened up here in Oakland. And we have a lot more information coming up. But for those of you who are joggers, and I know you're probably tying up your shoelaces right now, but before you go out and do that jogging, listen to my first guest. He's got some information to give you. His name is Tony Burke. He's an author of a brand new book called 55 and a Half Running Trails. Welcome to On the Square. Now, um, this is a relatively new book. Just mm -hmm. came out a couple of months ago, right before the holidays. Right. Um, let me ask you why you began writing this book. I understand you're a runner. That's correct, yes. I was bored with my own running areas. I used to run in, around the block and up by Cal State and Hayward near where I live. And I just started to try and branch out to find other areas to run for my own interest. And then that stem that became a book. Most people do run around in their own neighborhoods, their own local parks, maybe the, the track uh, around the local high school. Mm -hmm. How often would you really go out beyond your own neighborhood? Wouldn't you have to do that on a weekend? Yes, weekends, summer evenings, holidays, that sort of thing. It's something to add a bit of spice to, a, to an otherwise, uh, what can be a dreary running program. Mm -hmm. How long have you been running? About nine years, a little longer perhaps. Been a long time. Mm -hmm. Are you um, the kind of runner that enters into marathons, etc.? Yes, I entered them, but I'm no, no uh, danger to the lead runners. <laughs> so, but I entered quite a few marathons and, and 10Ks and even ultra marathons from time to time. Okay, when you decide to write this book, you decide to branch out. You've covered, um, I think, six Bay Area counties. That's correct. Right? Did you run every single one of those runs, or did you just ask family and friends and, and read up on what was no, happening? No, I, I ran every one, and plus a few more besides, because it was edited down to 55 and a half or 56 trails. Mm -hmm. How many did you actually find? Well, I covered about 85, and I'd say a good 10 of those were, uh, were disastrous attempts. You, I'd look at the maps, and I'd hear recommendations, and then I'd go out there and find out that they were, they'd get flooded during the winter, or they were too hilly, or you know, things like that. So. Um, it wasn't too difficult to pin them down to the to the 56 mm -hmm. although there are certainly more trails out there and I could go on into, certainly into another book but uh, I ran out of strength somewhere along the line okay so we'll wait for a second book to yeah, come out all right talking about your first book mm -hmm. um, what were some of the considerations that went into the selection of all these different trails Firstly, um, I wanted trails that were easy to follow or relatively easy to follow because we don't want anyone getting lost out there myself included uh, comfortable trails, preferably wherever possible, be away from traffic. Um, easy trails to run on, by that I mean uh, dirt surfaces where possible. It's not always possible, but uh, in many cases they are. Good views, things to do after the run, which is very important. Good parking, water availability, restrooms, things like that. Right. You, I'm not a, a jogger myself, but I was thinking as I was thumbing through the book, that you said, you know, where the bathrooms are, mm -hmm. where the water fountains are, those are important considerations they when you're out are. there. They certainly are. When we say trails, naturally I con uh, conjure up running trails as mm -hmm. dirt roads um, in backwoods and parks and what have you, but we're talking about an urban setting also. Yes, I'd say about 60% of the trails are in regional parks and state parks. And then the rest are uh, by necessity in uh, urban areas. And I've, w there again, I've tried to find trails where there is no traffic, or if, if there is traffic, you're off of it, you're away from it, enough for you not to be bothered by it. Mm -hmm. like, traffic can be uh, very inconvenient during a run, and it also breaks concentration, it's dangerous, and it's not very comfortable at all. Do you give advice as to how to run or what to wear that um, would help you become a better runner or easier on the uh, feet? I don't, not in the book. There are so many other good publications on, on that. And most runners after the first few weeks tend to find out what works for them. But it's a good idea, especially if you're going to trails in, uh, in the parks, to take uh, enough clothing where you're comfortable. And if you dress in layers in lightweight clothing, that way if it gets warmer as you go out, you can just take off some of the layers. Mm -hmm. It seems that safety is a real factor. Mm. How did you incorporate that idea? Safety is a big, big problem, especially for women. And uh, the only thing I can really suggest is that you run with a friend. If you're going to do a, a run like this anyway, the ones that are in the book, and you want to get away for, for a nice peaceful run somewhere, it's a good idea to share it with a friend anyway. 
and that way you have the safety of, of numbers mm -hmm. and you can enjoy it and uh, keep each other company and bolster each other's spirits as you're going around. And if you have the strength, carry on that uh, bottle of wine and the cheese in the back, right? Exactly. That's <laughs> okay. a very good idea. Now, how long are some of these runs? You've included some rather short runs, mm -hmm. I guess in, in running, runner's terms are short, right. and some long runs. How yes. long is short? They vary from just over two miles to just over 15 miles. But the important thing is that what I've tried to do in each location is pick a run that shows off that particular area. In almost every location, you have alternatives, and I've just suggested one. But when you get there, um, check the park maps, for instance, and pick a run that, uh, that meets your own fitness level or interest that particular day. Or just try the one that I have mm -hmm. as a suggestion. If some of the longer ones are too long, many of the long ones are out and back. So you don't have to go all the way out. There's nobody there with a shotgun. You can turn around halfway and come back and shorten the run that way. Mm -hmm. But there are many alternatives out there. In terms of a ratio, what about the, the novice runs versus the intermediate runs versus the advanced runs? Do you have a little bit of everything? Yes, I mix them up quite a bit. There are, by the, uh, because of the terrain in the Bay Area, there are certainly some hills out there that have mm -hmm. to be negotiated, and most runners, uh, uh, and especially runners that don't run very much, are frightened or, or at least unnerved by the idea of a hill. So what I suggest is that rather than avoid the area because there's a hill there, and I've tried to find areas where they're well graded and the hills aren't too bad. Mm -hmm. um, walk up the hill if, it's un if they don't feel like running the thing because you're still getting a good workout, but you also get the added bonus of enjoying the particular area that you're in. Mm -hmm. We're calling these running trails, but actually mm -hmm. they can be walked or hiked. Oh, certainly. What so. are some of your favorites? Let's talk about Alameda County since you're a resident of mm -hmm. Alameda County. And as we're doing, I want to show some of these, um, some of what we have here. And this one, for instance, Tennessee Valley. This is that's you know, Marin County. That's Marin County. You give us yeah. some information. You also give us a map, mm -hmm. and you give us alternative routes, as you said. Right. Right. So that um, we, we're not stuck with just one. No, one particular that way. one you almost are. It's an out and back trail. But, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Here's one, Alum, Par um, Alum Rock Park. That's, that's down in San Jose. Yeah, Santa Clara County. Okay. What is your favorite out of all these? Well, in Alameda County, it would have to be Coyote Hills and Regional Park. That's because when I first started to to leave home, get away from the nest, and that was where I went to, uh, to run. So I have a soft spot for Coyote mm -hmm. Hills. Plus, there's a wide area there of, of different kinds of trails, from a paved bike path, which is nice and easy, about three and a half miles, to dirt trails that go out into the uh, marshes and out onto the salt pond. So you mm -hmm. have a wide range of running there for whatever mood you happen to be in that day. Are the trails that you cover strictly running or hiking trails? They don't include bicyclists or Some of them are, are bicycle trails. Not too many, but a few of them are, and you do come across them. But um, they haven't been a problem, mm -hmm. to, to me anyway. Not anywhere near the problem that a car would be, for instance, right. in the street. Okay. In the title, 55 and a half mm -hmm. trails. Now, I counted them up, and your contents list 56 That's runs. Right. Where's the half a run? The half a run is from uh, San Francisco to Sausalito, mm -hmm. and you catch the ferry back. It's a nice, easy way to finish up a run. Uh-huh. Run a little bit, hike transportation, and run a little bit more. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Again, we had the author of 55 and a half running trails um, of the San Francisco Bay Area. Tony Burke is his name, and thank you very much. So you joggers, you can go ahead and run on out and pick up the book and find out where more trails are. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome once again. The sun is starting to come out now, so it's not as dark when you're watching this show, which is nice. But let me hurry up and tell you we got a bunch of good things for you. Dr. Ellen Hinke is going to tell us how to keep our plants looking beautiful and wonderful um, this summer and spring. Also, we have the 1985 Miss California Model of the Year, Giselle O'Farrell, with us. Also, Emmy Carl and Pat Bowles will be talking about a wonderful function that's happening at the San Jose Museum of Art. Before we get to that, because a lot of you people that get up at this time in the morning might be putting on your sweats and your shoes, and you're getting out to go run, well, we have the perfect person for you to listen to before you go out and run. Um, Tony Burke, who has written the book, excuse me, Tony, by all means, <laughs> 55 and a half running trails of the San Francisco Bay Area. I said, now that's an interesting book. How did you come to put this together? Well, I, it was more or less by accident. I started to uh, look for different places to run because I was bored with my own running program. 
and uh, I was an advertising manager for a chain of running stores and I talked to a lot of other runners and asked for suggestions from them. By accident met a publisher and the whole thing just came together from that. We just carried on looking for new places to run. Oh, see, now I was thinking that you were out there running. You know, this is a pretty place, but there's no other people here, so I, I should tell them about That it. came afterwards. It was uh -huh. the other way around. In Santa Clara County specifically, where are mm -hmm. some good places to run? Well, a favorite of mine in, in, down here is um, Alum Rock Park. Mm, it's close very, to my house. Yeah, is it? Yes. Oh, well, maybe I'll change it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's very peaceful down there, and it's, uh, it's, very, it's sheltered and it's exposed, depending on which what kind of running you want to do, or both. Another one is uh, Joseph D. Grant Park up by the uh, observatory, up mm -hmm. towards Mount Hamilton. Oh, you get a great workout running oh, up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd drive. I'd oh, drive okay. up there if I were you. All yeah. right. That's very pastoral up there. You can see uh, they have working cowboys up there still, which is great for me because I'm an Englishman and we've always been enamored by uh, cowboys. No Indians, I don't think. Uh, plenty uh, of cowboys up there. All right. Now, what are the different kinds of trails that we might find? I mean, you know, some that are pretty, some that are tough. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we find in here? I've tried to mix them up quite a bit. The major factor was to try to avoid traffic because uh, no runner likes traffic. So with that in mind, I've gone to regional parks and uh, some bike paths within city limits, so you don't have to leave the city. But for the most part, they're outside of the city. Some have hills, some don't. The distances vary, but you're never limited to the distance that I suggest in the book. I've given suggested routes in the book, but you can uh, change that to something that's more to your own fitness level or uh, however you feel that particular day. But you've all kinds of different terrain out there. This is a marvelous place to run. So you can have um, views of the bay, you can have redwood forests, you can have rivers, streams, you can be out on the bay on the levees. It's just a tremendous assortment of different runs to brighten up a running program. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the more difficult ones? Mount Tamalpais has uh, several mean trails up there. I've included four runs on Mount, Mount Tamalpais. Uh, and I've tried to, to keep the hills within a, a reasonable uh, a tolerance level. But I have one that's one of the longest runs in the book, uh, has part of the Dipsy Trail. Well, if you've heard of the Dipsy Run that's held over there, a race mm -hmm. that's held every year. And the last three miles of that run is, uh, it's a good idea to walk. That's <laughs> what I tell myself every time I'm over, I'm over there. But I also have runs up there that are very easy to do as well. And your favorite place to run? Mount Tamalpais of the, of the entire Bay Area, I think, would be because of the views of the city and uh, San Pablo Bay and the ocean and uh -huh. the different terrain there, the trees and the, the fields. It's just so much up there. Okay, we talked about Santa Clara County and San Francisco. What about our, our friends on the peninsula and on the in the East peninsula? Bay? Yeah, well, there's, there are dozens of uh, great trails in both areas. In the East Bay, a personal favorite of mine is Coyote Hills Regional Park, just north of the uh, Dumbarton Bridge. And uh, I started running there when I first left the, the block run. Mm -hmm. So that's a favorite of mine, and Redwood Regional Park and Lake Chabot over there. And the peninsula, um, again, many trails. The, um, the, another favorite of mine is Windy Hill. Uh, you, you don't actually run on the Windy Hill. You leave the hill behind, and you come into a sheltered gully. It's about an eight-mile run. That's a good, good distance run, but it's very pretty and very scenic, very, very uh, peaceful there. And then down by the uh, reservoirs on the uh, Sawyer Camp Historic Trail, it's another good one. There's, they're all over the places. They're just great. Now, I know I, I don't like to talk about down things every once in a while, but you know, in, <laughs> in, in Mount Tam, we heard you know some runners getting messed with yeah, and that kind of stuff. Right. Do you have any tips or anything to recommend to people? When yeah, running? I have a, one basic recommendation. It's unfortunate, but uh, I think that women runners in particular should should uh, try to run with a friend. These are the kind of runs that it's good to enjoy it with somebody else anyway. Sure. Go out and have a good time after the run. I try to suggest a few places where you can go and enjoy things once you get through because they're often quite a long way to drive to get to them. So it's worthwhile. But if you have somebody with you, you have the security that you, no one's going to bother you. It's not so bad for men, obviously, but uh, women it's be, in recent years, it's become something of a problem. And it's a, it's a great shame that a woman just can't take off and run yeah. anywhere she wants to. But and it's not the way. where can we pick this up? Hopefully every bookstore in the world, but I think most of the uh, most of the stores in the Bay Area are carrying it now. Huh? Some of the bigger chains have it in. Too. And you're doing a big run this coming weekend? Yeah. In uh, Santa Rosa Santa for the Rosa. Cancer Society. That's right. So if you yeah. pick up his book, you go over there and get an autograph after he's sweating <laughs> and doing those kinds of things. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Good luck to you. Thank you very All much. All right. We'll be right back to talk with some friends of ours about this wonderful event, San Jose Museum of Art. Stay right there.
Hi, I'm Jamison Parker. You know, our state 